Jesus is a healer. I promise you, I've seen miracle healings. The Lord has healed me himself miraculously. And this video really resonates with my spirit because I had a disease. The acronym is LPR, Larynx Pharyngeal Reflux. It's since the age of about 20. Every time I would eat food, it would come up. I'd always felt like I had allergy-like symptoms. Um, I, I could, there'd be times I couldn't breathe. My sinuses would always flare up. And it wasn't heartburn. It was, it was a, it's called silent reflux. And then, man, I had it for nine years. I suffered. I took Nexium, protein pump inhibitors, Amoprazole. I got like three or four endoscopies where they put a mic microscope down my throat all the way down to my stomach, putting me under anesthesia. In the military, multiple endoscopies. I even got one overseas. And they told me I had what's called a hiatal hernia. And there was nothing I could do um, to heal it. They said it was just a genetic. I'd have to deal with it for the rest of my life. And that I'd have, I'd have to take Nexium and just lower the acid in my stomach and call it a day. Man, I used to be depressed. I tried everything, naturopathic remedies, alkaline water. I mean, I had so many naturopathic pill bottles. I was trying everything in the world and nothing worked. When I came to Christ at the age of 29, I'll never forget it on my one of my first, if not my first three-day water fast, right before I was about to end it and go, and go to a house fellowship with my brothers and sisters in Christ, the Lord told me, stop, because I was, I was about to go eat with them, right? The Lord said, stop, go to your closet. I went to my closet. He said, cast that demon out of you. Cast that spirit of infirmity out of you. And I remember saying, come out in Jesus' name. I fell to the ground. Phlegm came out of my mouth, this white stuff. It was nasty, and I, I cleaned it up, and I was like, all right, I guess I got healed, but I still... I'm not going to front. I still was doubtful. I laid there and I was like, I don't know, man. I got up. I was just like, whatever. We'll see. Man, days go by, weeks go by. And I, I, I remember I was in Texas. We were traveling, my wife and I. And I said, babe, I haven't taken any protein pump, like inhibitors, like no, 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 no pills, no Nexium for a while now. And I haven't had any acid reflux. I was like, bro, am I healed for real? And I remember I only had the, the faith of a mustard seed, man. But God used that. And I remember I went to the to the 7-Eleven or whatever gas station it was. And I had got like two Red Bulls back to back. Back then, if I drank even a little bit of Red Bull, a little bit of coffee, anything acidic, it would come up. I felt nothing. I felt amazing. And I knew that I got healed. And since then, I have not had to take any pills. My food doesn't come up. I don't get, no, I don't get any more allergy-like symptoms. It was a miraculous healing. It was a deliverance that led to a, fully, a full healing. So this video is very interesting. This man went through something very similar. I want you guys to watch it all the way to the end. It's very encouraging. I'm just going to say this. The Lord could heal you instantly, which is a miracle. And the Lord could also take you through a process of healing that takes time. But you always need to declare and decree his word and believe in what he says and wait for him to manifest his glory because he will. The Bible says he conceals what he reveals for his glory, and it's the honor of a king to search it out. And he will, he will, I promise you, he's already healed you. If you're watching this and you're like, man, I need healing, he's already healed you. You need to come in agreement and keep declaring and decreeing it and trusting that God is going to move in his timing through the process. Watch this video to the end. To hear that I have cancer, well, he told me cancer was devastated because I never had anything in my life. At 68 years old, Gregory Dublas couldn't remember ever being sick. But now doctors were telling him and his wife Athena they'd found a large tumor on his left kidney. They were certain it was cancerous. It was devastating. It was very, very hard, extremely hard. Doctors believed the best course of action was to remove the tumor along with his kidney and scheduled surgery. I began praying, believing God will take away the cancer, believing that the day when I'll go for the surgery, God will take away the, the tumor and I will be okay. I was praying about a healing. But prior to surgery, a CT scan showed more bad news. His lungs were covered with nodules, an indication the cancer had spread. My heart was broken. I was in such a condition that it's indescribable how I felt. I heard the Lord in a crystal clear voice from the right side and told me, I know about it. Instantly peace came upon me. 
And by the grace of God, I forgot about this horrible feeling of being done, being devastated. Peace came, overwhelmed me. Doctors decided to go ahead with the scheduled surgery. A few weeks later, he was referred to oncologist Dr. Ted Logan about his lungs. Basically, we saw pulmonary nodules that were increasing in both size and number, and that's worrisome, very worrisome. I thought that that probably indicated that this was metastatic renal cancer. Dr. Logan explained the treatment options, including chemo, but those would only buy him time. None could provide a cure. There's a huge range how people do with metastatic kidney cancer. Some people are dead in a few months and other people are alive years. So if you average it all together, it comes out around 10 to 12 months. Gregory remembers the drive home. I was brought so low as low as the dirt. I mean, it was devastated again. And I couldn't stop tears coming, water coming from my eyes. But then I heard the Lord tell me, cast it out to cast out the spirit of grief and hopelessness. So as I was driving, I turned my head and I said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I'm casting out of me. And instantly, this peace came upon me and the water stepped. <laughs> Once home, he shared the news with Athena. Fear came upon me, it did. And so when we were talking about it, he goes, I'm going to be okay, Athena. I'm going to be okay. Don't worry about it. That's, that's how he, he encouraged me. After considering the options and horrible side effects, they decided to forego treatment, well aware of the consequences. I have to say, untreated, most people are not gonna do very well. Gregory and Athena believe differently as they turn to prayer and God's word for healing. I assembled 70 verses of talk about hope, life, deliverance, and peace. Every chance I had, I spoke the word of God. John 15, 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, anything you shall ask should be done unto you. John 14, anything you ask in my name, I will do it. The Father be glorified. Anything you ask, I will do it. I belong to our prayer group. So there was so much encouragement, just belonging in that group. I had a lot of prayer warriors all over the place. A miracle began to happen. Inside, this faith that I already had began to rise to the point where I was expecting a healing. I was expecting to be healed, to heal good news. Then two months later, he went back for blood tests and another CT scan. Dr. Logan had news. It was a surprising finding, but it's not something I haven't seen before. It's just very rare. The nodules in the lung, those shrunk. In fact, Gregory was told they were too small to be measured. Then I jumped up and said, I loud, I yelled loud. I yelled so loud, I know people heard me there, all the, all the doctor's office, Lord, thank you, I know you hear me. Medically, the phenomenon is called a spontaneous regression. For Athena and Gregory, it was the answer to their prayers. All those years that I knew what the Word of God was about became real. The healing and how God responds became real. And how important it is for people to believe in the Lord with all your heart. That was 2016. And at each of his six-month checkups, there has been no sign of cancer. Gregory and Athena attribute the healing to the power of Jesus Christ. There's hope with the Lord Jesus. There is always hope. Pray to him, don't stop. Even though something might not have happened today, it doesn't mean that it won't down the road. He doesn't answer. That means that we need to learn to wait on him. Every time when we believe in Jesus and we pray, the Lord hears. Wow, amen. That is truly an incredible story because we serve. Yes, wow. It's interesting how people think that Christians can't have demons. It's just proven. It was just proven right here. He casted the spirit, two spirits out of him, of grief and hopelessness. And when the hopelessness and grief left, what happened? He had assurance, hope, faith, and he 
continue to declare and decree the word of God after they told him, you probably only have 11 to 12 months to live. Cancer spread throughout his body, kidneys to the lungs. It wasn't miracle. It wasn't instant. It took time. He wrote down 70 verses about hope, healing, you know, just, just what to declare and decree. That's why I tell people all the time, it's the word of God that strengthens our, our angels. It's the word of God that reminds the Father that we believe in what you said. It, bring, it pleases the Father with faith. We please him when we confess his word loudly. That's why praying in the Holy Ghost, building up your faith, which is tongue, that's important too. Because that's the word of God. That's the Holy Spirit speaking through you. Hallelujah. The tongues of angels. So my brothers and my sisters, it might be you that needs healing. I'm here not only as, as a testimony myself, but also this brother, powerful testimony, healed of terminally ill cancer, only had less than a year to live, but the Lord Jesus Christ healed him, and it took time. You heard what his wife said, fearful, lost hope, but was encouraged by her husband's hope. The Lord, the Lord comforted him. She, he comforted her, and they went to work. They went to prayer. No medication, no treatment. They took it to the scriptures. That's the best medicine. Instead of taking pills three times a day, pray three times a day and watch God manifest his power, his healing power, his deliverance power, whatever it is you need in your life. Declare and decree his word, and I promise you it's an eternal, it's an eternal fact. You can't, this word will never go void. It will never return void to him. It never returns void. It always will go out and do what it needs to do. It always will go out in the spirit and do what it needs to do. My brothers and my sisters, Jesus Christ is a healer. He's king. If you appreciated this video, if it blessed you, I want you to comment down below what blessed you. If you need healing, I want you to also comment down below so we can pray for you. And if you're one of those people scrolling through the comments and you see people with a prayer request, pray for them in the name of Jesus. Pray a fervent, passionate prayer for them of faith. And also, if you've been healed of a disease, miraculously, comment down below what God did for you because you don't know who's watching the comments, who's reading them, and who can be blessed. God bless you all. In the name of Jesus, make sure to hit the bell icon for notifications. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. Again, comment down below and go share this video with all your friends and family. And I would highly recommend, go watch the 700 Club. It's a powerful channel. Powerful channel. Go watch it. A bunch of miracle healings. Jesus Christ is Lord. He's Lord. Not Muhammad, not Buddha. Jesus. God bless.